What you've just said is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. Come on! Yeah! Oh. Hey guys, Maverick Christian here. I've decided to be high time to start a vlog series. And this first episode, I'm going to talk about why I debate with atheists. Please excuse my being in my underwear. I was just sitting here minding my own business, and then one of the many Wiccan women that I am friends with, and also have wild, non-Christian, unprotected sex with, asked me to look at this, let us say, genius's video. I have done so. I have also tried to find any debate video that this clown, uh, I'm sorry, genius has been in, he has said that he has debated many atheists in his YouTube video channel. Nowhere do I find any evidence that he's actually done so. He also posted a link to a website where he said there's more debates. Didn't find that <laughs> either. So, <clears throat> what we have now is Desert file. Debate challenge to genius. Pick one topic. One. Only one. Regarding atheism or atheist. Make a statement under 30 seconds. 59 seconds or less. One topic. Pick that topic. Then assert or deny your position for or against it. Make the statement. Say you deny it. Or make the statement. Say you affirm it. If you are incorrect, I will then accept the debate challenge and we will debate that one topic. One topic. If what you have said is correct, I will not debate it. So, genius, pick one topic. 59 seconds or less. State what that topic is and if you affirm or deny it. I know you won't. Uh, you know, most blog episodes would be like more apologetics oriented, uh, like evidence for the existence of philosophical views favorable to Christianity, like does God exist, does the supernatural exist, and so forth. Uh, no atheist out there has ever denied that there is evidence that there are philosophical arguments regarding the existence of the gods. How about some evidence that the gods exist? Everybody knows there are arguments that the gods exist. Everybody knows there are arguments that the gods probably don't exist. There are arguments saying, what does it matter? Evidence that there is philos are philosophical arguments that the gods exist. Who's denying that? <laughs> I can see why you actually don't debate things, uh, genius. But seeing as I have a debate coming up very soon, you know, as of this video, I've decided to talk about <clears throat> why I debate with atheists. Nowhere do I find any evidence in support of that assertion. So there are about three reasons I can think of off the top of my head. Uh, one of them is this. I am honestly curious how the other side thinks. Uh, like a lot of the arguments I've seen uh, for God, you know, some of them don't work all that well, but some of them do work pretty well. Good. Pick one. One. State what the argument is. 59 seconds or less. Assert or deny that position. And I'm kind of wondering, it's like, okay, this is a pretty good argument. I've tried really hard to find something that's wrong with it to make it not a good argument. I can't think of anything. Actually, yes, you can think of all of the problems with your best argument. You just will not do so. But you already know what all the flaws in your arguments are. You already know that your arguments are wrong. You just don't 
care. Let's hear it. Let's hear your best. 59 seconds or less. Affirm or deny it. And you know how atheists look at some religious people as that, you know, these are, you know, they're fanatics. They, they won't accept the evidence. You mean some atheists are stating a demonstrable fact? How dare they? <clears throat> I kind of feel that way about atheists sometimes. It seems like, you know, you know, not all atheists are rational, but there are some atheists who would sooner believe that there's nothing morally wrong with torturing infants just for fun than abandon atheism, so... You assume that! <laughs> You said you assume that there are some atheists out there that find no moral qualms at all for torturing infants. You assume that. I can see why. You don't do debates, dude. Pick one statement. Affirm or deny it. 59 seconds or less. If it is, there are some atheists out there who find no moral problems with torturing little infants we will debate that i'm looking forward to that topic <laughs> there's absolutely no way you are going to accept that assertion that you made and defend it you are not going to do that we, everybody knows you are not going to defend that position why did you make it why did you assert that when you know you cannot possibly, not in 100 billion, billion, billion Carl Sagan years, support the assertion that you just made? I'm sorry, the assumption. But if you want to debate it, I'm your Huckleberry. <clears throat> Given that I don't think you know, the atheists will be have their minds changed by it. But I'm honestly curious how they'll react then. I, I really don't know how they'll react. So that's one reason why I do that, just out of curiosity. <clears throat> Second reason I do that is uh, to try to make my own arguments stronger. I found out that when I, you know, test my ideas with the atheists, some atheists come up with interesting objections. Sometimes they identify weaknesses, maybe a point that needs to be justified that I didn't justify before. You know, the behavior that you just described that you engage in, look up the phrase cognitive dissonance. If you read the Wikipedia article, dude, you'll see your name right at the top of the example list. So one example of this is that... Um, uh, well, a moral argument for the existence of God. Part of how I established my case about, you know, objective morality probably doesn't exist if atheism is true, but objective morality does exist, and that means it's evidence for God, is that I try to show that, okay, so atheism is empirically undetectable, and an atheist actually challenged me on that point. He says, well, I don't see why objective morality should be considered empirically undetectable. I was like, oh, well, I guess I need to justify that. And so that's part of my standard case if I argue the moral argument for the existence of God that, Morality is empirically undetectable. Wait a minute. What does morality have to do with the gods? You leaped over several required steps that you first have to work through before you can get to that argument. Demonstrate that morality has anything at all to do with the existence of the gods. Or, if that's not your assertion, demonstrate that morality has anything at all to do with believing that the gods exist. Then, and only then, can you then proceed to your other false assertions. So that's the second reason. It helps me create better arguments, identify weaknesses, and so forth. And... Another reason, the third reason, is that even if it's a, and this has to do with like if it's like a broadcast debate or if it's like online somewhere, is that even if I want to change their mind, maybe somebody else who listens to the debate, who get who gets to see both sides of it, uh, might be, oh, I think the theist has a better point here. Maybe theism is true. Or Yes, and I'm quite confident that... Shania Twain is going to call me up on the cell phone and say, David, I'm lonely. Please come visit me again. 
Not coming to happen, dude. There's nobody going to be in your audience who, who says, no, nope, gods don't exist, who will then listen to your, oh, there's some atheists out there who have, would be happy and cheerful to torture a baby. After they hear that, they are not going to believe that the gods exist. Trust me on this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, no. You know, maybe naturalism is not all that rational or something like that. Maybe naturalism is not all that rational? Pick one of the many alternatives and explain how those are in any way rational. Everyone in this room is now dumber for having listened to it. 